Don't you love the sound of chainsaws in the morning? Um, it is October 18th. In my last post, I, in my, you know, fogginess, I thought it was August. I don't know what was going on in my brain there, but it was October. So uh, we're here now. It's Friday, the 18th, and uh, just wanted you guys to see a little bit of the property stuff that we had happen um, from Hurricane Helene. This was our chicken coop. It's a really good chicken coop. Uh, I think it was urban coops or something. Um, gosh, Roost and Root, they're a really nice chicken coop company. We've had it for a couple of years. Love this thing. We had to build it out. Um, you know, it comes with like a kit and you build it out and it's been awesome. I, I knew it would be bear proof for the most part, unless a bear really needed to get in there. Um, we haven't had any issues with predators, but uh, apparently it is not tree proof. So it got smashed. The tree on the bottom here, I had been meaning to let my neighbor know it was questionable, but we had such a um, issue getting that letter out uh, that you know, didn't get it out. So it is now our issue. And I'm grateful that it didn't take off our porch here. It did take off. We had another fern on the other side. It smashed him and ripped the gutter um, almost completely off. Uh, hit the top of that roof pretty good, but the porch is still attached. So that is super good. Um, but had that second tree that's on top there, that oak tree, had that come down just a few feet over, some of those big branches um, that we've now cut, you can see this was actually all littered. You couldn't even get right here. Um, Sarah has done a lot of work to cut off some of these to make our path to the chicken coop a little smoother. Um, but this was crazy. Like these branches would have definitely taken out our entire porch um, just by a few feet. So I feel really fortunate. Um, and I should say our, our chickens are alive. Our ladies are alive. They're actually in front of me over here. You can't see them. Um, they're out in the leaves. Today's one of the first days we've been able to um, get in there and clean it up a bit. Um, that's not really cleaning it up, but trying to give them a better nesting area uh, and fill their food a little better and clean out their water. Uh, so today was kind of the first day we've even gotten in and got that back door opened over here so they can get out and uh, free range a bit. Um, so they have been literally cooped up since uh, the storm which is not uh, their typical day. So I think they're much happier now. Uh, you know, we're trying to, I've asked a few folks, so we're trying to figure out where we're gonna maybe send them for winter. I'm not sure this is gonna be winterized in the next few months. So I um, might need some people to host our chickens, um, maybe indefinitely, maybe find them new homes. I don't know, this is gonna take a while to rebuild. Um, it's gonna take us a while to get this tree off because uh, I don't know if you can tell the oak on the top is huge and we don't have a chainsaw blade big enough um, but it's not you know a huge priority uh, it's not our house so I feel really grateful um, you know and it did kind of hit the disc golf um, driving range that I built this last summer but uh, built it super strong so that thing didn't budge at all which is awesome one of the power cords in the front of the yard that we had two posts coming out one of those posts well they both went um, but one of them went all the way to the ground. And so the cords hung up on my metal posts um, for the disc golf driving range and bent one just nasty. I thought it maybe had come out of the ground and I could just stick it back in the ground, but it's totally bent. So I may uh, try to pick up some welding skills and uh, fix it myself um, if I'm able at some point. So some fun new projects. Um, you can't see here, but in front of me, I can show you guys, there is a huge oak tree that went down. This was my favorite red oak on our property. It was gorgeous. It kind of took up the centerpiece of our backyard. Uh, it was really, really magnificent. And unfortunately, it was taken in the storm. Um, but fortunately, uh, it didn't damage too much. I mean, it hit our retaining wall. Uh, so it's definitely done some damage to the stucco and and the retaining wall, and we haven't explored how much yet. Um, but f the fortunate thing is that because I was scheduled for a double mastectomy on, on September 11th, a couple weeks before Hurricane Helene, I had moved my car up close to the retaining wall just to get it out of the way. Uh, 
kind of like it got tucked in there a little bit better. And normally I would have parked toward the walkway and Sarah's truck would have been along the side of the driveway that was taken over by this tree. This thing went pretty good into the driveway and hit my car because we had flip-flopped, but because of the retaining wall, uh, it didn't do really any damage. So I feel really fortunate because even a, you know, a couple feet here and there would have, you know, smashed a window or caused some pretty nasty damage to, to either of our vehicles. So I feel really fortunate. So let me show you that oak tree. It was gorgeous. I used to be up there. That's a big tree. Um, cameras just don't do things justice. But just to show you, we have a little retaining wall like there, and the tree came down kind of right at it. Uh, most of our driveway got pretty hit with it, but it wasn't our house. So I feel really fortunate that the house um, dodged a bullet there. Uh, yeah, I think we fared okay. It did take out uh, about a fifth of our hemlock tree, but I was reassured that uh, a fifth of a tree isn't the biggest deal and the tree can survive. So we're gonna trim that one back and hopefully save the hemlock. I've been putting a lot of um, time and money into trying to save it naturally with like the Japanese beetles, these super teeny tiny beetles that only can survive on the woolly adelgia. Um, and so it eats those and then goes to other trees that are infected and eats those. And then when that's gone, they die. So they're not cheap, but I've done that the last couple of years and we've been able to keep up on all of the little fuzzies from the Delgid. So I do believe this tree has a chance. I'd love to see it make it. Um, there's another huge tree down on the orchard side of the property just beyond where I showed you. We have a little kind of sad excuse of an orchard, but we do have some producing apple trees. Um, so that whole side of the yard got pretty smashed. I had a disc golf basket up there and it's really sad looking. Uh, there was a huge pine tree close to the road uh, and I remember during the storm, you know, Sarah had been up there. I had a swing. There was a previous video where I'm on a swing back there and this tree was like kind of over horizontal and she hung this really great swing for me. Um, and so I'd go up there in the mornings and things and I was up there for a video while she went up there noticing that it had been smashed by a tree and wanted to show me that. And seconds after she turned off her video, another tree came down right at her. So she, sprinted to the house you know and this is like when we all thought the storm was done um, the storm you know the worst of the winds maybe had passed by the afternoon on friday but the ground was so saturated that so many of the trees started coming down um, that afternoon which was really scary because we were out walking the road trying to help neighbors um, and assessing the damage uh, and it was sketchy so I didn't stray far from the house, but uh, Sarah wanted to get a good shot of that, and I'm really happy she was able to outrun this huge pine tree. Um, so I kept asking, like, but where's the pine tree? And she's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know where the pine tree is. I'm like, I can't see it over the road. Maybe it went into the neighbors, thinking it was never going to hit us. Well, it did. It came right at us. It took out another portion of that poor hemlock, uh, and it took out my disc golf basket and probably portions of our orchard. <laughs> Um, it's a pretty m big mess over there, but it, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful. It also didn't come for the house or for Sarah. So, you know, count our blessings. Uh, <sighs> today I mostly just wanted to show you a little of that and tell you that, uh, I am doing okay in my cancer journey. Yesterday I went out to Dr. T's office in the Pisca Forest, Brevard kind of area of North Carolina, which wasn't hit so bad. Though on the drive out, there was definitely flooding there. Could tell um, a lot of brown stuff, you know, all over the bushes and everything around the river. So you knew the water got up pretty high. But she luckily has a little house out there that she does some infusions. So I was able to do a high dose vitamin C um, yesterday, which took off pretty much the entire afternoon. We left by like eight. It was late. Um, I'm sorry, we left there by like seven. We got there for a two o'clock. So it was an hour drive down. So one to seven, that's pretty much my day, getting an IV drip um, and then got back uh, later. Um, so yeah, that's still happening. I, uh, I will be doing more high dose vitamin C, but I'm probably gonna have to string it out a little bit further than I'd like, uh, mostly financially and also the accessibility to Dr. T's office. You know, an hour drive, 
just to get there is a big commitment. Um, she is totally worth it, so I will continue to do that. But, you know, I've also got to balance that with my four-hour drive to Atlanta, which I am now scheduled for next Wednesday. Uh, so I'll be doing some more mistletoe on Wednesday, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, this past Tuesday, the 15th, I had uh, my Herceptin and Progetta treatment. That is not chemo, it's immunotherapy. Um, you know, I always feel a little heart racing stuff around that time, and I don't feel wonderful from that therapy, but uh, I didn't feel it too bad this time. My GI tract didn't seem to get hit too hard, um, but we're only a few days out, so I'll let you know, I guess, a few more days. But normally it's the first few days after, so I feel like I did pretty good this past treatment. Um, so we're going to keep on that schedule of every 21 days for a little bit longer until uh, I either quit it or um, we do a test for Signaterra and find out it's not affecting my cancer. Maybe the cancer cells go up. Um, but if also I don't show any signs of cancer, I may try to push it out a little bit further out. So I'm not doing so much of it every 21 days. Maybe try it every you know six weeks instead of three. Um, so, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we can cross it. Um, I'm feeling really pretty good. Uh, yesterday I was really tired after vitamin C, um, but that, you know, is super common because it's oxidative stress. So it takes a lot out of you um, because it's, you know, oxidizing all your tissues and it's just a lot for the body to process. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, all things considered, I'm feeling pretty great. Uh, we were hoping to go to the balloon festival. There's a hot air balloon festival in Statesville this weekend. And I was really excited about it, but I looked it up and they don't allow pets in there. And, you know, as far as, yes, we could leave Juno, our puppy, somewhere um, and have her babysat somewhere. She's just still so young. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not super excited about going to an unfamiliar place and leaving her either an unfamiliar, you know, building or with somebody that she's not super aware with or close with. Or, you know, I'm just going to be one of those helicopter moms. Um, I think she just needs to be a little older before we're gone for a whole weekend. Uh, so we're probably not going to do the hot air balloon festival, but maybe next year. Next year will be their fifth, 50th anniversary. So that seems like a good year to uh, try to get out there. Um, we might go down for a pumpkin festival, I guess, is in Franklin this weekend. And Franklin, some of the surrounding towns like Franklin, um, Dillsboro, Waynesville, Bryson City, um, uh, Cherokee, uh, even Hendersonville and Brevard. I mean, these places want people to come visit now because uh, Asheville is such a devastated area. It can't take on tourists. Um, so much of the surrounding areas just can't take on tourism right now, which is a bummer because that's what financially Asheville put all their eggs into, that basket. So uh, it's going to take a little while for us to get our feet back on the ground financially, I think, as a city. But um, hopefully that'll allow them to pivot something a little bit better overall but we'll see um so we're gonna hopefully maybe try franklin tomorrow or silva or somewhere out there and just you know maybe just get out and see a community and see people laughing and rolling pumpkins and doing silly stuff so i think that sounds really refreshing so we might do that um one thing i wanted to say that i didn't mention uh with a lot of detail last time was how awesome uh the sort of like rescue mission was to get to me and get my drains out. Um, for those of you who've been following my story, I know I went kind of quiet there during Hurricane Helene because we didn't have service and um, I, I was so afraid of losing charge on my phone. I didn't want to do a video and all that stuff and I couldn't have uploaded it anyway. And so here I am now updating you, but I, uh, I was rescued by uh, aerial recovery. These guys are total badasses. They are so cool. They are from different branches of the military. They're all volunteer work. I mean, they're just incredible human beings. And they showed up at my house in two, you know, tactical vehicles, rolled out of that thing and come up to the house, um, you know, looking for somebody with medical need because they had a ticket to come to specifically our house, which, um, you know, of course, I'm the one that was greeting them. And I'm standing there on the porch with a cup of coffee like... What do you mean? Somebody here needs medical help? Like who? I'm thinking, gosh, did somebody get hit with a tree? Maybe they need to be somebody down the road. And, and they were like, no, ma'am, I think it's you. So, you know, because I'm like, well, you know, in my family, who could be sick? I'm thinking, is it me? I'm have, I have stage four cancer. Yeah, okay. 
I suppose that qualifies me for need. And then I do have these drains sticking out of my body that, you know, I had adhesive allergies, which is wonderful when they stick surgical tape on you and expect you to leave it on there for weeks on end. And this was already a week past what I thought I was gonna get it out. Um, so I had taken off that sticker, bandages. Um, so now I had just exposed sutures that I tried to use paper tape to tack to my body so that I wasn't uh, irritating those sutures, you know, and that's not a great idea because of course then I'm in my flooded office, you know, with mold starting to grow and I'm in there pretty much for an entire week with um, friends to try to clear that thing out. And, uh, you know, my sutures got really irritated. Um, they were definitely super red. Um, enough that my partner was really concerned and she's of course more aware of my health status than I am. So I was feeling not too concerned, but when I look back on it, it, it really was a, a pretty scary time to not be able to get in. Uh, the hospital didn't have running water. You know, it was just, you know, I was ready to remove them myself. My uh, surgeon had told me how to do it. So we were prepared to go get a shower and have somebody help me pull this like eight inch you know, cord out of my chest wall. <laughs> um, but luckily we didn't have to do that. So a uh, very, very dear friend of ours, uh, Jim Worth, uh, you know, he ended up getting hold of a famous social media influencer. And um, gosh, I think it's Ray. I'm terrible with social media, so I'm so sorry if you're listening. Um, you are awesome. Thank you for putting the post out. I think it's Ray. And anyway, she got the word out that we needed help and a lot of things had to come together to get these amazing guys over to our closed in road. You know, we had a lot of trees down in our neighborhood, um, a lot of healthy trees, which is why they, they think a tornado went through because of the way they're all laying. And it, it was bad here. I mean, it's bad everywhere, but it's really, uh, you know, certain areas are like really, really bad. It was either the flooding or the winds, you know, and, and for us, we had flooding that took out a bridge in our neighborhood and we had the winds. Um, luckily, uh, we didn't have houses wash away in our neighborhood. So we are really, really fortunate, but we did have houses smashed by trees. So not great for our neighbors. Um, so these guys showed up and started to take me to the hospital. You know, at first I, and I still feel guilty because I don't feel worth it. You know, that classic, reason I probably have breast cancer in the first place are am I really worth their time their energy their effort you know when there's all these other people out there um, that need more help um, but I need to get over that because I am worth it it's a hard thing to say right and I don't mean that I don't feel like I'm not worthy there's just a part of me you know I'm coming from the side of I'm used to being the therapist, the provider, the person helping, the person rolling out of that tactical vehicle to save the day. That's where my mindset is, you know, but that's not where I am in life, uh, you know, and I haven't been for a while. So I need to wake up to that reality and I, I need to learn to accept help when it's offered to me. Uh, so I'm trying to do a lot better at that. And that was, you know, luckily I've already had a year of trying to get that wrapped around my head. So I think I'm in a much better state than I would have been <laughs> um, a year ago trying to receive help from my office. At least I'm like, yeah, no, I can't do this by myself. So I really need the help. So it's come a long way. So what I'm trying to say is I really appreciate that team and the people it took to get that team to me. Um, and they really made me feel like I was worth it. And, you know, that's, that's just kind of uh, what I guess this whole thing is about. What tragedy ends up doing for people is sh hopefully showing them their worth. Um, so that was a really amazing, amazing thing. And, of course, you know, timing was fantastic because my surgeon on the way to the hospital texts me and she's like, I'm in my office. I can remove the drains if you can get here. And so I just had those boys reroute me there. It was closer. Uh, they were ready to drop and go, but she asked them to stay because it wouldn't take long. And after she raided her office and got me a couple supplies, which were extremely necessary, and I cannot thank her enough for helping me with a couple sanitation wipes to make sure, you know, our, our surfaces were clean, my body could be appropriately cleaned, you know, around suture sites. Um, 
you know, I was able to get that and, and the wounds were able to heal up pretty quick. She gave me the right cleaner for them, not necessarily more the caustic stuff I had on hand. Uh, I had some other great neighbors uh, like Christo who ended up making a little um, calendula and comfrey salve for me. And uh, I've been using the Red Moon Herbs uh, Green Wonder Salve, that stuff's gold as well. And, you know, I've been using both of those on my um, drain, drain holes, <laughs> drain spaces. Um, and things have healed up really, really well. So uh, I'll do a video in the future where I kind of show you, you know, um, what those suture lines look like uh, if you guys are open to it. And uh, I'm not afraid to show it. I'm pretty proud of the way it looks. I think they've done an excellent job. And I, I think I've healed up really well, especially with having overdone it two weeks after surgery, trying to move all my stuff out of the office. So I think all things considered, we did really well. Um, so I wanted to just reiterate how grateful I am for that experience because I, I don't think I would have uh, prioritized myself the same way. So it's really amazing to have good people watching your back and able to put out, you know, a helping hand that gets you where you need to be. So anyway, super grateful. And I uh, just wanted to say that again. So thank you, Jim and uh, Ray and aerial recovery and Samaritan's Purse, I believe had a hand in that there. They've been here offering help. Um, you know, we might have to reach out and see if we can get some, some people in here to help us remove some of these trees. Uh, Sarah and I are not trained to do stuff like this. There's a couple branches there that are under some pretty extreme load. You know, they've been bent like that, you know, so I know you have to like relief, relieve that pressure and cut it just right or it can, come up and snap you in the face. So we're trying to um, not over do it in our skill set. <laughs> um, in fact, today, uh, I think at five or so, we're gonna go to a um, chainsaw safety class so that um, we can, you know, we can do this the right way and as safe as possible. And uh, that's another thing. Um, a neighbor through another organization, and I wish I knew the one, was able to get us uh, an extra chainsaw. So we have a Husqvarna chainsaw and it's like, I mean, it's like a big chainsaw. So I'm really excited about that. Um, that's going to be really helpful, you know, for some of these big trees in our yard, but you know, we can kind of coast. This doesn't have to be done, you know, tomorrow. This can take time. You know, the weight of my, my office is off me for a little while. Uh, the landlord uh, was nice enough to not hold us to our lease, so I'm not expected to pay my rent, uh, which is, you know, phenomenal because I was already at a pretty slim bank amount to be dishing out thousands of dollars for a space I can't use. So I feel really grateful of where we are right now, and I hope you guys are all in a good, safe spot as well. Um, and uh, I guess I'll fill you in next week on how it all goes. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Take care. Bye-bye.